Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to Bison Workshop. I'm Bob. And we're out here in the shop just cleaning up. And um, as you can see, <laughs> the grinder has come back off the bench. It ain't going to work. Uh, so this has turned into a nightmare is what it's turned into. Uh, I got my 8 inch grinder back up and going. I just disconnected the start winding, taped each end off, and draped them inside the motor. And um, just left the run winding. So now I'll show you what I have to do. Which ain't a problem. If I start this the way it is, it'll go backwards. It'll go like that. So let's stop it. See, it's going backwards. So anytime I need to start this, I just do it like that. And she sounds exactly like she did before. Now it'll be forever for it to start down. I plan to make a bit for this and make a table for all around this that can be changed in different directions. We're gonna to try to build something for here that mounts to the bench and may put both this and the table on a mount itself and then we can screw that down with four screws to any bench. So <clears throat> it needs a paint job and that wheel dressed, I actually need to get me another wheel. These won't fit, but I bought that one and it ain't got enough power to do anything with a wire wheel. And the wire wheel is the one, the, mo the most used tool I have, just about. And uh, it'll do fine with a grinding disc because you're not putting that much pressure on it. But when I'm putting pressure on these, it, it'll stop it. So, <clears throat> but anyway, so I wanted to do a uh, show on the mill. Uh, I've got it temporarily mocked up. It is working, but there needs to be some tweaking going on. I got to change motors. I got a, I got another motor coming, this one. But right now, I've got it all wired with limiter switches so that when it gets to a certain point at the end of the table, it shuts off. When it goes to the other end, it shuts off. So we'll put you over here and show you what we got. All right, so basically what I did <clears throat> was in my first video I showed where I had milled this down that collar that was on it that's like this collar over here it had that on the end of it and I milled it off well because of the way I had to mount this aluminum to it I decided to go ahead and take that back out and mill the whole thing flat that way this year would mount up against it and it wouldn't have no voids. So, so I made that plate there and then I made this plate and both of these were sandwiched together and drilled exactly the same. So these are exactly the same size and I just drilled eight millimeters in, eight millimeters in and that's where I drilled and I drilled them both together. So, this one has a countersink screw that goes in this part into this, just like this right here is. So, that is for this to go back and forth. Just like that. 
So if I want to use my hand wheel, I can. Now if I want to use power, I can. Now there's an issue with this. I don't, I don't feel like that it's that big a deal to reach down there and pull that back like that. I think I need to relieve some, uh, take a file and file each side of the square that I made on this piece. So I got three pieces here. This piece that goes on the motor with a set screw. And this and this is all one piece. And it goes up to about right there. Then this side goes to about right there. And it's just got a hex on it. All this is one piece. And that set screws onto the lead screw. And this is a 5 8 spark plug socket socket and this motor here ain't gonna work it's too small yes it will work if everything is loose but you know I may have to make a new plate for this to accommodate a different uh, motor I don't know yet we'll see uh, I don't know how big that other motor is. You can't hardly tell by pictures because in the picture this thing looked bigger than that. And if I know this had just a little old RC motor on it, I probably wouldn't have got this and would have kept on searching. I was trying to find a um, I was, I was trying to find a motor for a uh, winch or a uh, door window roller uh, motor, and they're all different. I tried to modify one, and they're a little difficult to modify. Because they're actually, they got gears on them and stuff. And this is how this thing goes together. So the motor's actually not turning. This plastic is what's turning. Uh, if I could make a new one of these to put in there that has a shaft on it to where I can put the uh, collar on there that I make. This would work, but I tried to modify this and it just wasn't working out for me. So I would have to remake that piece, which is not that big of a deal. Uh, it can be made. And uh, I could turn this into a shaft, you know, like a 3 8 shaft or whatever. So Window crank motors are not very good for that. Uh, I'm not sure about wiper motors. Now, a wiper motor oscillates back and forth. So, it's probably got stepper switches in it. <laughs> Some sort of a stepper switch because then it bounces back and forth from one to the other. So, I got this one and we're going to try it. So now, let me show you what I did with the, uh, I'm going to pull this out of here so I can get you guys in there. That's my temporary uh, shield for keeping stuff back there clean. <laughs> so, so then I went and made the... So this is the uh, setup that I have. This one here, when you're going left, it will 
come up against this piece right here that is sandwiched in between can't get y'all positioned in a good spot so I made these aluminum plates that are the same size as this except it came off of the end about a half inch off the end originally I was going to take and slit this from the top down to about right there and then I was going to bend that over and then build, bend a flat spot on it so that it would hit against that switch and have a little more spring to it. This don't have very much spring to it. I'd rather have a little more spring to it. Uh, but it actually shuts off immediately, so it's not really, you don't have that travel speed that's going to be a problem for you, so this should work just fine. And then I just took, because I slid it in the wrong side, I was supposed to slid it up here, not down here. I had to bend all that back up and then bend it up to where it stops. Now, yeah, we lost a half inch of our travel, but that's okay. I didn't lose too awful much. Right there is where it shuts off, and I've got another sixteenth of an inch to go before it's bottomed out. So I, I calculated that pretty good. All right, so now we've got our wires run to it. Now we're going to turn this on. And I'm just going to turn it all the way up to max because that motor is really not strong enough to do anywhere slow. It needs some torque. It don't have enough torque. So I just use it to move the table right now. So now let's uh, see if we can get the uh, controller and the table in the same spot. Now... We're going to start this. Now, when I'm doing this, there's one other problem that I need to combat. I don't know how I'm going to combat it, but this thing, as it's going, this your socket will actually slide off of there eventually, and before you get done, it'll just back all the way off. So I'm probably going to have to put some kind of a finger in here to move that back and forth. I don't want to put it on top because then I won't be able to lay nothing flat on my table. So I need everything below my table. So we're gonna to have to figure out what we're gonna do here. And I have I have some ideas, but we'll see. We're probably gonna do some 3D printing on this one and 3D print a, a block that goes in here and has a hole for this where it slides back and forth on this but because we don't want it above the table we'll just do a half hole on the top and do the bottom half of this pole and then this will just act as a guide this will be the slide so we can do it that way and i can probably also put a make this thick enough that i can put a set screw and a spring and a ball in there and make some ball detents in the on and the off position. We'll see how that works. Um, that's going to be trial and error. So now let's watch her in action. So now we're going to go in that direction. Left. Voila. I mean, it's an instant shut off. Now, I can reach up there, flip that, and it'll go in the opposite direction. And when it reaches the end of that travel, let's take you off here and show you. See here how it's backing off?
You know, I laid them two pieces, man, and they still look crooked. The holes that goes on the shaft are nice and slip. I mean, just perfect fit. So I'm not understanding why them things are crooked, man. They, they look like they're going crooked. Now we're almost there, but this year will pop off before it gets there, I'm sure. It has done that before. We're almost there. You see now it's getting a little bit of drag to it. All right, it didn't back all the way off, but it has in the past, so it's backed off that much. So now we just flip it the other way. And I like to rest it in the center where my vise is right underneath the jaw. That way I got the same amount of room around him. See, it's backing off. It's almost off. See? And it's just as simple as reach up there and push it back on there. So if I put a ball detent in the uh, lever that I'm hoping to make, I'm probably gonna draw it up tonight. So um, it's probably just gonna be a block that goes all the way across that I can just slide that back and forth. Cause we wanna try to get as close to the socket with the uh, whatever we're gonna use so that it kind of keeps it in, in place so we'll see see it moves too easy <laughs> so alright so that is the controller Oh, better turn them off. They'll be dead before you know it. I, mean, I, I always forget to turn them some bitches off. <laughs> so, we're also thinking about doing a beam for this. I'm trying to make this mill a little more rigid. And I'd like to try to find a half inch plate that's just big enough to stick out about a half inch on each side of this base and have it bolted to the plate and then have a I-beam that boy, bad boy right there I've already marked it as you can see marked it there that's uh, 29 inches I think but uh, it's going to go all the way up to the plate for the uh, the Z-axis motor and all the way down, it's going to weld. Every every part's going to be welded except for this part right here. So I have, well, that sticks up far enough. I might not even have to worry about that. Might be able to weld it all the way around. Weld that I-beam to this half-inch plate. And then bolt this to the I-plate, I-beam. I so we can just drill and tap this and put us some bolts in there to bolt that I-beam to this piece and hopefully that'll make it a little more rigid. Uh, this thing is not rigid at all but most of my play is this all this part's moving. You know I just trammed it up and it's already off so I'm just gonna have to live with it that way. Anyway uh, that is what we've got so far on the Grizzly Mill. Uh, I've been out here all day working on this and yesterday. And uh, I think it'll work out fine. I just got to get that other motor, get it put on here. 
and the power supply is working just fine so uh, don't forget to like share comment subscribe you guys have a good one later